For JavaScript, it was determined that the best experience for the user when something goes wrong in the code is to give up and fail silently. This can sometimes be a frustrating solution. For example, in the background of an application when an error occurs, no more JavaScript is executed after that point. Any code that was completed prior to that is fine. So from a user's perspective, they may see that the page comes up and loads fine, but then nothing seems to work. At times, that is not the behavior you want. Your application may include some code that is expected to work, but if there is an exception so that that code doesn't work, you may still want the application to continue running. In other words, you are fine with the application running without the part that failed. That is one reason for doing exception handling in JavaScript. With exception handling, you can anticipate where something might go wrong, and you can include a try-catch statement to deal with that problem in a way of your choosing. Now let's first take a look at how the try-catch statement works. Here's the syntax for a try-catch statement. We have the keyword try and then curly braces. Curly braces go around the code that you want to execute. This is the code that you expect to execute. Now, if something happens in this code, the code that's in between the curly braces that causes an exception, some type of error, then the code within the catch statement will execute. The only time the code inside of the curly braces in the catch clause of the statement executes is if an exception occurs. Now, at the same time, JavaScript will pass an object that contains information about that exception. For example, an error object will be passed in. You can capture that with a variable in the parentheses of the catch clause. And you can display that or do something else with it if you choose to. Now, the nice thing about a try-catch statement is if the problem occurs in the code that's part of the try statement, code will continue execute. It will simply run this code that's in the catch clause and then continue on with the rest of the code. Where if you didn't have the try catch statement and a problem occurred, all the code would just stop at the point where that problem happened. So that is a try catch statement. Now, we need to look at some examples, but before we play with some nonsensical examples to show you how this works, I want to show you a bit of code that shows a try-catch statement that I frequently use in some of the work that I do. Now, a lot of my JavaScript work deals with online courses. And for these online courses, there are standards and systems in place for tracking the learner's results. For example, how far they have proceeded through the course, how well they did, how they answered questions, that type of thing. Well, sometimes those systems are not available, but I still want the course to run even if the data can't be tracked. Otherwise, the course would no longer work. So this is an example of a situation where a try-catch statement can be used. So let me jump to Sublime and show you that sample code to begin with. Now here in the try clause is the code that I usually want to execute. It's not important for you to understand what it does. I simply want you to see how the try catch statement deals with this. So what I'm usually doing here is I'm grabbing an external object JavaScript object and then using that object to communicate to to a server. But there are situations where that object may not be available. And so all of this code, well, it would fail beginning with this first line if that did not exist. And so and would generate an error. And so since that code would fail, any of this code would fail, I put it inside a try clause. This is where I'm recording 
some information about the course. And so that's in a try clause. If it fails, if it does not work, then I have chosen to simply log to the console that we're not able to communicate with the online system. And then I display what the error is. I could be more verbose with this if I wanted to. If I wanted to make sure the learner realized nothing was being tracked, I would then, of course, display something to the user, not just put it in the console. But by putting it in the console, it allows the possibility to help the user. If they indicate that there's a problem, we can have them look at the, the console and if one of these statements shows up, then we know that the problem is they're not communicating with the online system. This try catch statement also allows me to work with the course and continue to run the course without it being connected to that online tracking system. I don't always want it connected, especially when I'm making changes and, and fixes and that type of thing. So that's a real live example of a situation where I frequently use a try catch statement. I'm going to comment that out and let's go ahead and take a look at another example that will help illustrate try catch. So let me show you what I've got here. These are nonsensical functions. Nothing much is happening here, but it will allow us to illustrate try catch. First off, I have a main function and it simply logs to the console. This is very important for this application. So this main function is something that is important to run. I then have an alternate function that could run. I then have another function. And that function here is called by this function, another function here. So one more function is called by another function. Now here's my main code that runs once the document is loaded. It will log to the console starting application, then it will call main function, then it will call another function. Another function in turn will call, call one more function. So if I save that, let me just refresh this and open the console and we can take a look at what we have. So starting application, that first log, log statement, this is a very important to the application. This was the main function. Then here's another function and it called the one more function. Okay, so all of those log statements happened. Now, jumping back in, what if for one reason or another, this main function did not exist? Just comment that out. Maybe we didn't connect to the JavaScript file we needed. Maybe we're running it in a scenario where that doesn't exist. There could be a number of reasons. Usually we want this to execute, but when it doesn't, then we have chosen to have the alternate function execute. So let's set up a try catch that will take care of that. So first off, we enter try and then we enter curly braces. Now inside the curly braces is the function that we would normally want to execute. If all things were working as they should, this is the code we would want to execute. Now, if something is wrong that that code is not able to execute, then we have a catch clause. And inside that, we can execute the code we would have execute if the main code didn't. Now that may be some alternative code like what I've done here, or it may simply be that we want to notify the learner of a problem like I've done in this sample down here. Okay, now before, I've already set the try catch statement, but I wanted to show you something before I did that. So let me comment this out. We'll come back to it. I want to try to run the main function without it existing, just so you can see what happens normally. So on the page here, everything looks the same, right? 
JavaScript doesn't tell you something has happened, but in the console we can usually tell when something's happened. For example, we get a reference error this time because we tried to call a function that does not exist, that has not been defined. And so we get a reference error. Notice that none of the code following it executes. It stops at the point where the error occurs. So nothing beyond that happens. Now let's try it with the try catch statement. So let me go ahead and uncomment what we've already created. Now we have a try catch main function. If main function doesn't work, it'll call alternate function. Let's save that and see what happens. Starting application. This is the alternate function for the app. So the main did not execute. Here's another function, one more function. Okay. Now, before we move past that, let me do a console log statement of the error object so you can see what that is. So what gets passed into the catch clause. Let me save that. Refresh. And so it's the same information that is provided in the error, except it doesn't act like an error. It doesn't stop the execution of the code. These other statements down here continue to run, even, and we're still able to see what the problem is, what caused the main application to not execute. All right, let me jump back in again. Let's uh, cause another error to occur. An error will be an exception. So when another function calls one more function, it's not going to work. So what's going to happen there? Let's go ahead and see. Save that. Refresh. So we this is the alternate function. We get past that first problem. Here is another function. Yet when it tries to call one more function, everything stops at that point. We receive a reference there. Now the reason I did this is I want to show you one more feature of the try catch. And that's even though the problem may occur a level down when this another function calls some other code, that's where the problem occurs, we can still catch it at a higher up level. So for example, let me put a try. catch statement around this. I'm going to go ahead and capture that error object and I'll just log to the console that error. And then I'm going to put one more console log statement down here so you can see the code continues to execute. Whoops. Can't spell. All right. Let's save that and refresh. So we got the reference error here. We've got a reference error here. Kept track of it. It even shows us the stack of the calls for that. And then the end of application statement, console log statement still executes. It's not stopped. So what I'm showing you there is that even though the problem occurs farther down in the code, we can still catch it with an exception handler above that code, which is what we've done right here. Now one more bit of information about the try catch statement before we finish. Let me go to a new screen for that. And that is there is a finally clause that is available for the try catch statement. You can choose to use that if you would like. Here is how the finally clause works. The code that is inside the curly braces for the finally clause will execute once the try and or catch code has finished. So if you do the try and all the code in the try works, it will then, once that's finished, jump down to the code that's inside of the finally clause. If something, if an exception occurs and then, 
and it jumps to the catch clause and executes that code, it will do that and then execute the code that's in the finally clause. So that is how finally works if you choose, choose to use it inside of a try catch statement. Now both catch and finally are optional. However, you do need to have one of the these two when you have a try. You can't just have a try and usually what you'll see is a try catch, but there may be situations where you'd use a try finally. Now, the best thing to use finally for is if a problem occurs, you need to wrap up some code. You need to close some things, make sure things are not left in a bad state when a problem happens. That can be a reason to use finally. So that is exception handling in JavaScript with a try catch statement. In our next episode, I'm going to talk about if statements and how they can be used in place of try catch statements and a little bit of a discussion of why do you use one over the other. When would you use a try catch statement if you can use an if statement or vice versa. So hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. If so, please like the video. To view other videos from our channel, you can click the video link found in the center of the screen. To subscribe to our channel, click the circle link on the left. We release new videos every week. And to visit our website where we have a list of all of our tutorials we've published, click the link on the right. Thanks for watching.